back to another Flash episode review. My thoughts on tonight's episode of The Flash titled The Once and Future Flash. And it's good to be back after that month-long break that all the um, DC shows took. And kind of back-to-back -back between last night's episode of Supergirl and tonight's episode of The Flash, they were pretty solid episodes. I mean, this episode, there I had some problems with it, but they were just minor issues. Because, um, you guys know, like, like in the last like number of episodes, I've been, like, my interest in the show is kind of like slowly going down not that the show is bad it's just like the story is not really going anywhere and like i think i still i really enjoy the show but um it just it's it just hasn't gotten back to that season one level of quality where like every week there's something there that you're like that's like catching your attention and like the story is just that just drawing to you and i just feel like that, that the show hasn't really had that and they're trying all these like gimmicky things with iris's death and Flashpoint and all this other stuff, but now that we're getting towards the end of the season, like they have to keep like the, the story focused. And this was a fairly good episode. It granted the, the again my problems aside, I thought it was an enjoyable episode. Um, wasn't it an episode I didn't necessarily expected, but I'm gonna go to put it nonetheless. And to get started into things I enjoyed about this episode, um, I did like how the episode started with you know with Iris or with, like, with Iris and Barry in their loft and Iris. Having Barry promise her that no matter what happens to her, whether she lives or dies, she's gonna be there for Joe and Wally, because once you go, once Barry goes into the future, he sees that Barry kind of abandons everyone after Iris dies. And as I was watching the episode, I'm like, would Barry really be that hung up on Iris's death, like eight years after? But at the same time, like, Iris is the love of his life, and he's Barry himself is he's lost both of his parents, and in that version of Barry, he's lost Iris, so that takes a toll on a person and it's kind of knowing how Barry is especially that it wasn't necessarily out of character for him and some people are like oh look at emo Barry but I think there's more to it than that and it's not just like some surface level thing that like, Barry is to see him so deeply affected by Iris's death and just seeing how just he just pushed everyone away and it's just one of those things that like I personally thought it was pretty well done um I was worried that it was going to be a little cheesy or a little too on the nose but I think the way they handled the future Barry, I thought was really well done. And I gotta say, I was gonna say this for a little later, but I loved the future Barry version of the suit because that is essentially the Flash suit from the comics. And um, it, it, still a little leathery and slightly different, but oh, more or less, that's with the belt and all the thick lightning bolts going around the suit. Like you see that it actually is pretty much the suit from the comics except for the yellow boots. And I've been okay with Barry's suit. Um, my only problem with it was like in season one when they had him flip it over like a hood. It had this like V thing going on because you could tell that like they they could, didn't figure out a way for him to actually take off the mask for certain shots because he had that little chin strap and in season one that chin strap would like disappear when you take it off. But then they fixed that in season two. But and then that little minor thing. But the suit itself I've been okay with. Um, I personally prefer the DCEU version of the suit that we're seeing in um, Justice League and that we saw briefly in Suicide Squad. I know some people are like, oh, he looks like a Power Ranger, but to me, I, I think that version of the suit makes sense because it's if Barry's moving at such fast speeds, first of all, he can't be wearing leather because if Barry's going at like hundreds of miles an hour and all that friction with the suit, it, 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 it wouldn't work. Because the show can say, oh, it's, it's polyurethane, all this blah, 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 it's leather, it's leather. And I, it's just, like, so I think the DCEU version is like, functionality wise it's a better designed suit um and i, I like both of them don't get me wrong but i just i think in terms of in terms of practicality i do think i do prefer the movie version compared to barry's in the show but um <laughs> i went off on tangent for a second but um story-wise this was a very kind of dark and emotional kind of episode and the show has a lot of those emotional episodes but this is kind of like the darkest that we've seen the show go and um to see this kind of like bleak future where like the whole team is disbanded and killer frost is still killer frost and caitlin's gone sabotage is defeated but yet you still have like you know, like barry's essentially given up um cisco has been the only one who's kind of like kind of like the beating heart of the team he's trying to get everyone back together and everyone especially barry's just like no i don't want to do it anymore and cisco really was the emotional heart of this episode and it's just like especially seeing how like seeing his brother's death affect him in early on in this season and some people didn't necessarily like that and it was just I understood Cisco's reasoning for being mad for a little bit, but I think they dragged that on a little too long. But having him just still trying to be Barry and remember, trying to have Barry be the Barry he remembers and try to get the team back together and 
just find, find, trying to find hope in this bleak future of theirs. And I really, really like the future Cisco in this. And it sucks when you find out that Killer Frost, because you know, we saw that vibe earlier on in the season with Vibe versus Killer Frost. And you find out in that battle, Killer Frost like destroys Cisco's hand, so he can't vibe anymore. And at the end, uh, Barry did say to Cisco, I'm going to do what I can to, to fix that. Um, because now Cisco has cybernetic hands in the future, and I'm pretty sure this future isn't set. I mean, in sci-fi and these comic book shows, no future is really set because they can change it anytime they want when they have, when time travel is a factor. But this it was still a cool future to see nonetheless. It wasn't as futuristic as I would have expected. It kind of just looked like 2017. Because when they showed that futuristic new newspaper, I thought everything would have been like hologra holographic. And I understand that, like, sometimes, like, if we think the future is gonna be like, oh, this futuristic thing, there's gonna be flying cars, all that stuff. And then we, that's like, like in like 1985 when they made it Back to the Future, when they made that reference to the show. Like, realistically, like, look at 1985 when, or the 80s when they were making those movies. And they thought, oh, 2015 is gonna be futuristic, all this stuff. And it's really not that different from the 80s in terms of technology wise. They're granted, there's like touchscreen and iPhones and smartphones and all that kind of stuff. But it's not as drastically futuristic as people might expect. So, like, I don't know. Like, I, that's how I reasoned with, like, oh, it's not too futuristic because it's only eight years. Which, I mean, I get it. But so I wish they would have been listening. Like, and when it's a geeky show like this, you would feel like they would want to show off their, like, future technology and all the CGI and stuff. I don't know. But, again, I, I like that. I like the future. But I wish we saw a little more of the future world itself. Um, so that was just like a little thing that, um, not that I didn't like, but just, I wish they saw that um anyways um what else and then we, we do get some tidbits of information as far as you know because we, we don't find out who savatar is and they tease us at the end of the episode with that potential reveal of savatar he's climbing out of the suit so we know that savatar himself like that whole metal thing is not an actual that's not him as a person that's like a suit he's wearing and we see him climb out and i think he was like a bald person or something and so it, it's hard to tell who it is and because he's trying to team up with Killer Frost, and so they're teasing that like whoever it is is gonna immediately make her trust him. And honestly, this reveal better be worth it because we're 19 episodes in, we still have no idea who Savitar is. And I, just, I don't want this reveal to just be like, oh, that's him, I guess. Like last year with Zoom, it's like it was so convoluted because you had him as Jake Garrick, and then it was this whole convol again, this whole convoluted thing, like they really didn't have to do. I know they're trying to go, again, at, when the show runners and these writers go for shock value over story quality, that's where I think that's just, like, you're losing fans, and fans begin just to look, lose interest in general. So that's where, like, season two, towards the end, while I think it was a good story overall, there was a lot of convoluted things that they introduced that they didn't necessarily have to. And so that's why season two as a whole wasn't the best season, well, in terms of The Flash, this is, it's like, it's like season one, season two, season three, or how I'd rank them currently, but... I just want the, the Savitar reveal to be worth the wait because that's just they're trying they're, they're like pulling us out at least like oh we're almost gonna do it we're almost gonna do it yeah we stay tuned for next week because they, they, we had a whole month long break and like they're teasing us like we're finally gonna have, find out who Savitar is because they've been teasing us like for the last number of episodes and just like come on just tell us or don't because it's getting really annoying at this point but um and oh, oh to, before I forget and, um I almost didn't I didn't mention um the top Mirror Master. And um, I totally forget, I remember when, the, when they first had um, the Top of Mirror Master early on in the show when um, Barry and uh, Jesse teamed up against them, I thought I recognized the actress who played the Top, and I do, and, and then that's the girl who was on um, the lead in that MTV show, Awkward, and she was like, in, in an episode of, um, or a couple of episodes of American Horror Story, and that's where I recognized her, because she did look a little different, because she's had some work done, and her hair is different, and then she's like, I'm like, oh, that's what it is, so that's a little thing, but um, also... I know the show has a budget, and I know certain things can't translate from the comic to live action very well. Um, I just wish that the top and the Mirror Master, at least Mirror Master more than the top, just had more of their comic book look to them. Because at least like with the, with Captain Cold and Heat Wave, there's somewhat nods to their actual suits. When you know, when the Snart has like that cold jacket and the cold gun, and then you know, and then um, Rory has. Like, this like that really just tannish gray stuff that Heatwave kind of wears in the comics. But with them, it just suits and dresses. And it's like, it's not even like remotely what they look like in the comics at all. And granted, in the comics, the top is a male character compared to a female on the show. But it's like, they didn't really do much to really make them look like their comic book counterparts. And it just, 
That was a little nitpicky thing. But it was cool seeing them nonetheless. They weren't utilized as the best. I, just, I wish, I mean, they're cool characters. I just wish they would do more with them. Because I feel like they were taken down a little too easily in this episode. But I do like how they were having that battle with them. And you had Barry and his older self teaming up. And I just, that was a really cool moment to see the two of them team up. But I, the, the takedown was a little too easy. But, um, you know, it's the Flash. So, you know, like, I'm not, like, I'm not going to hold it against them. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but overall, again, my little problems aside, I enjoyed this episode for the most part. Um, again, I just want that. I hope that these next few episodes are streamlined in story because again, I'm tired of them. I'm tired of the week to week episodes. I'm just like, oh, are we gonna find out about Saptar? And we don't. And it's because it's like we're see we have like yeah, episode 20, 21, 22, 23, four episodes left. We still have no idea who Saptar is. I just hope they don't say that for like a the finale or whatever because that I don't know. I, and I just hope the season ends on a high note because of like the lackluster reception this, this season so far. Because while I haven't hated the season, I've enjoyed it, but it, it could have been a, a hell of a lot better. Um, some people have already just kind of given up watching because they think just, just dropped off in quality. And some people are like, "Oh, it's Arrow season three quality." I wouldn't go on that far. I don't think the show's that bad because there's no like relationship that they're focusing on. Granted, you say like, "Oh, they're focusing on Barry and Iris," but like they're not writing that horribly like they wrote Oliver and Felicity's relationship in season 3 of Arrow but I just think that the story just when, I mean, when shows are just 22 to 23 episodes it's hard to stretch out a good storyline throughout the entire season um, especially on the CW when story isn't always necessarily the focus a lot of it just kind of like the week to week stuff and like oh what guest are we going to have this week and like it's all that kind of stuff so I know they're going to be the, the filler episodes but I feel like the streamlined story of this season just has been the best because they tease up the, the flashpoint and then flashpoint let a lot of people down including myself um and then the whole dr alchemy thing and then that wrapped up and now it's savatar it's like, oh, and that, and we, for the rest, this back half of the season it's like oh who's savatar and they've been doing that with us for, like for like weeks or months even and it's like i just you know again, again tell us or don't and that's just like that's just what i want as a fan and i don't mean to sound like an entitled fan or anything those are just my feelings on the matter i guess so I think with that being said, that's going to be it for me. So what did you guys think of this episode? Send your thoughts in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for all the other content I put up on my channel. As I said earlier, I did a review for last night's episode of, the, uh, of uh, Supergirl. You guys should check that out on my channel. As well as last week, I did a trailer reaction to the uh, upcoming sci-fi series Krypton. You guys should check that out. Um, and as well as uh, last weekend with Star Wars Celebration. You guys check out all the videos I did for that. As well as my review of the Netflix show 13 Reasons Why. Um, as well as any other videos on my channel, you guys check those out. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, have a good one.